So before we start looking at the figures, I need to mention another thing, which I haven't mentioned so far, is that this is a partner dance. Um, however, it is also a very good one to adapt for dancing on your own. But a lot of the way the figures are structured recognizes the fact that in theory, there is a person dancing opposite you. Now, a peculiarity of this dance is that, okay, so you have two people facing each other like that. But when they move, they each do the same thing at the same time, but they're facing opposite directions. So for example, you start off straight facing your partner, but as soon as you start to move, say you go out to your own right, that's me going out to my right, your partner goes out to their right, which is that way. So you would separate from each other and you'd go away from each other and then you'd come back to each other. But if you look at the stepping, you're each doing the identical thing, but it goes different directions because you're facing opposite directions. This is a bit like an Auvergnat bourre. We have the same effect of in, a, in a lateral moving Auvergnat bourre step. More about that later. So for the moment, as a solo dancer, we're looking at a stem structure and a kind of curvy thing. I think of it as an anchor with a very short stem. You go slightly back and then you go out to one side and then you go all the way over to the other side and then you come back to the middle and to your partner. So we start from a central position and we're going to swing out more or less the same amount in either direction. It goes back, mark, and because I've stepped back, my free leg tends to hang slightly in front of me as I mark. Then I put my foot behind and go behind, side and front. I'm moving to my right. And because my foot's in front and I then mark again, my free leg is hanging slightly behind me. Now I'm going to go all the way to the left. I go back, mark, side, cross to the left and mark. So I took three bigger steps to get here. And you can either do the mark at the end of those six beats facing outwards to your left, or what's a very nice thing to do at this point is to put your heel down very lightly and swivel around and acknowledge your partner who is over there diagonally to your right at this point and say, I know we're dancing together, we actually are quite separated at the moment, but hello anyway. Now we come back, we swing all the way back again. Back mark all the way to the right again and mark, and this time we don't swivel round and acknowledge our partner because our partner's there to our left, and from this position, it's quite difficult to swivel there, so we don't attempt that, just stay looking out. And then we go back and mark, and we only come back halfway this time, and we move into, back to closer to our partner and face to face with them. So it's back, mark, over to the right, and mark, back, mark, all the way over to the left and greet your partner. Back, mark, back to your right and mark, back, mark, back to the center and to your partner. And here the mark, very often, because it's kind of very small and underneath you, I tend to put my toe down behind me and do a little curtsy almost at that point. But anything so long as you remain on your left leg because the next thing you need to do is step onto your right leg to start the stepping pattern again. Back, mark, over to the right, and mark, back, mark, over to your left and greet your partner, mark, back, mark, over to the right, and mark, back, mark, back to your partner in the center, and mark. Okay, let's try that with some music. With your right foot free so we can step onto it. Four, five, six, back, mark, over to the right. All the way to the left and greet your partner. Back, mark, over to your right again. Mark, back, mark, come back to the center and greet your partner. Again, back, mark, over to your right and mark, back, mark, all the way to the left and mark, back. Mark all the way to the right and mark, back, mark, and back to the center and mark again.
Canal. Back to the centre and mark. So we've looked at the first figure, which is a structure that takes up four times through the six beats. It's a fairly long figure. And when you're learning um, and getting comfortable and confident with this pattern, it's very helpful if you try and start that at the beginning of an A or a B music or the beginning of a phrase, not after two bits have already gone, because it'll keep the pattern of the stepping with the music. Later that might get broken, I'll explain why, um, but not right now. But it's quite useful. Wait for the music to get right to the beginning and then start that when you're practicing that figure. Another thing, I know I'm asking you to do a lot of things at the same time, but this relates to the fact, as I said, that there is a theoretical, at least, partner opposite you. And as I also mentioned, um, it's an improvised dance. So how do you know which figure you're doing next? Well, there are signals that are used to tell the partner what are we doing next. So you need to be aware of those signals and to practice putting them in. When you're actually dancing with a partner, you might decide in advance which one of you is going to initiate the changes from figure to figure, or you might agree that you'll just watch each other and you'll each sort of take the initiative. That's more fun. It is slightly harder. Um, but you, need, you both need to practice doing the signals. So, and there are, there, there are two types of signals. One of them is using your hands, and one of them is what I call hands-free, which is using some other element of what you're doing to give that indication. So, the easy one first. If you're doing the first figure, and you want to tell your partner how that we're doing the first figure, the first time, or we're coming back into the center, and what we're doing next is the first figure, that one we've just done, the anchor shape, you'd lightly touch two hands with them. So you'd come back in, I'm doing this opposite you, I've gone to my right, I've gone to my left, I've gone back to my right again, and then I come back to my partner and I touch two hands with them as I do that. The hands-free version of this actually involves twisting the shoulders as you come back in at the end of the figure. You've been over on the right here, you come back in, and as you do so, you turn your shoulders around your partner. Now there's a shared axis between you. You're quite close together at this point. So you both rotate your, your, your feet stay where they are on the floor, but you rotate your upper body around that shared axis. So you kind of keep looking at each other and twist around slightly, bringing your left shoulder in. Before, that means I'm about to start the first figure again by going off again that way. It's a sort of setting up a certain twist which you then untwist as you start doing the movement again so it's a really lovely feeling and it's a very nice and quite subtle thing to do you come in and as you finish you do this lovely twist and try and make it very clear to your partner that that's what you're doing because they're kind of looking out for it and your partner as soon as they see you do a twist they do one as well to let you know yes i saw you do that and i um i'm you know we're on the same bus <laughs> I'm doing it too to show you that I saw that, so now we're going to do that figure again. However, I do need to give you a little health and safety warning, um, and that is that doing a twist, standing on one leg, puts strain on the standing knee. So, however much you're able to twist up there, make sure it's happening in your waist, and try not to put too much of a a sort of um, a strong twist onto your knee as you do that. You can stabilize with the free leg, with the foot of the free leg there, even though it's a mark. Do keep your toe on the ground there so that you don't cause injury to your knee. And if you have knee issues and you think twisting is not a good idea for you, then go with that hand signal because there's no twisting of the knee involved. Okay, health and safety has been dealt with. <laughs> so. If I were to do that with my back to you, it would be back, mark, over to the right and mark, back, mark, all the way to the left, look at my partner, back. And you see there's that twist, that same twist there, because I've turned to greet them. Back, mark, over to the right and mark, back, mark, back to my partner. Oh, I'm going to do 
number one again, so I do that swivel or touch two hands with a partner. So you do need to anticipate the need to do that swivel. If you are the one that's, that's initiating, if you think, oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to initiate, I want to do that one again, you can't get to this position and then think, oh, crumbs, I need to do a twist. You actually have to think of it when you're about here. And you think, oh, yes, this is the end of this figure, and I'm going to do it again, so I need to be prepared to do a nice, steady, slow, big rotation to show my partner, yeah, let's do that again. Okay, so I'm going to put the music on again. It's quite slow, and we're going to practice, and every time you come in, do the twist, or if you don't want to do the twist, just remind yourself that there's a two-hand touch there. But do try to, to work out how it feels to come back in at the end and do the twist and not think of it at the last minute when it's a bit late to start warning your partner. Here we go, four, five, six, back, mark, over to your right and mark, back, mark, all the way to the left. Greet your partner, back, mark, all the way back to your right. And don't forget, we're going to have to do a twist in a moment. Here. All the way to your left, greet your partner back there. Back, mark, all the way to the right, and mark. Back to the center, tell your partner we're going to do that again. Back to your partner, tell them we're going to do it again. Okay. Good. That's great. Let's do the first figure again, this time to slightly faster music. So we get used to moving through that and staying confident on holding back on the marking moments. Right foot free, ready to step back and mark. And it goes three, four, five, six, one, two, three. This time, four, five, six, back, mark over to your right and mark back mark all the way to your left and greet your partner back mark over to your right and mark back mark greet your partner and tell them we're doing it again back mark tell your partner we're doing that again Again. Back, mark, over to your right. And mark, back, mark. Tell your partner we're doing that again. Tell your partner we're doing that again. Remember to tell your partner we're doing that again. And the last time.
good. So you might find once you start getting into the swing of that pattern of steps that you don't need when you do the mark, you don't have to have your free, the foot of your free leg right off the ground. It can touch the ground, it can kind of sludge along on the ground, but you need to become really secure in that timing, that irregular, asymmetrical timing, so that you aren't tricked into stepping when you should have not stepped on two and six. And that in the beginning was the thing that I found the hardest in this dance. The thing that, that kept tripping me up was that I would wrong foot myself by stepping where I shouldn't have stepped. So don't worry about that if that's happening. It takes time of just practicing. And I have to say that I, I can do this for hours. I can happily do that kind of stepping for hours. I just find it very pleasant and lilting. So give yourself the time, play some music, practice the step and get used to the fact that no matter what direction you're going, that you do a mark and that is on your right foot with your left foot free or certainly not any weight on it. And the next one that you do is going to be with your weight on your left foot and your right foot is the one that's got no weight on it. So those marks happen on alternate legs. The first one in the, in the group of six is on your right leg, but the second one is on your left leg. And then it goes back to your right leg again really quickly. And then the three steps and then you're on your left leg. And then you're quickly on your right leg again, but then there's three steps and you're on your left leg. So it's getting your neural pathways, your muscle memory to be happy with that. Now, let's move on to the second figure. <laughs> 